Hi, this is Shadi, and today we will discuss Kinshiwaza or Forbidden Techniques. There are a total of four techniques that are considered within this list. The first one being Ashigarami, the second being Dojime, the third being Kanibasami, and the fourth being Kawazu Gake. The first two were banned in 1916. I believe Kanibasami was banned in 91 and Kawazugake around 2003. I may be off a little bit, but around that area. So today what we will do is go through them and try to find a legal, more competition-friendly version of these uh, techniques. Um, it's not going to be, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a discussion and also go through the techniques. So uh, there is a way I do believe that they can come back, but not all of them. First, let's start with Ashigarami. I am sorry to say this, but there is no way I'm bringing this submission back from the dead. Um, it is dangerous and also leg locks as a, as a whole in Judo are not a thing. I don't know if they're ever going to come back, but Ashigarami seems to be the nastiest of them all. The way you compress and flex your adductors down on the knee and also extend your hips, uh, it can really rip out the ligaments that are on the inside of the knee. I will show you what kind of damage they will do. Uh, so here you see you split the crotch and then you um, reap the knee and then you flex and get the tap out. So here let's somewhat see the effect of it. So it's kind of like this. You see here it's really putting the knee towards the inside and then it damages it. This is from uh, Joshiro Maruyama's documentary. Here let's see it again and then he falls down. This is the inside of his knee, what happened to it afterwards. So there's no coming back in my opinion. Next, Kawazugake. Now, my personal opinion is Kawazugake is not all that dangerous because for one reason. The reason why is you're actually taking uh, the flexed leg and the knee away from the sacrificing body and thus not making it that much dangerous uh, if you are collapsing on the leg and the leg cannot bend then yes it's very dangerous here this is 2014 someone actually got away with kawazugaki she was actually going for ochigari and then got the leg tangled and then pulled it away away from her and sacrificed herself on to uke and thus got the ippon no one got hurt uh but nonetheless the idea behind it is that you have the leg that cannot bend uh, and then you fall on it and thus it becomes dangerous. So, the solution. Remember when Shintaro did that video called Heel Hook Deashi, where he's talking, where he showed this entanglement from the side where uh, it helps you lift the weight off of the leg and thus uh, be, uh, reaping it becomes very easy. Well, uh, this entanglement is a bit far more shallow than the original Kawazugake and thus it becomes far safer. And to add to it, Let's take Denis Zenikov's, uh, I would say, spin on it, where he would wrap around the back of Uke, entangled the same way that uh, Shintaro did, and kicks away, again, the same way Shintaro did, but what he added was the sacrificial element to it, or the aspect, which makes it a um, sutemiwaza, just like the Kawazugake you just saw from the Kodokan. So I would say this is a far more competition friendly and uh, safer version of Kawazugake where you can do it, kick away and sacrifice yourself the same way you saw the Kodokan demonstration and it would technically be Kawazugake in my opinion. The All Japan Yasuhiro Yamashita you see here um, suddenly goes for Kanibasami and then pulls him to the side and not backwards. So this is what made his ankle absolutely shattered is that he collapsed right on his ankle and not away from his ankle. Uh, Kawazugake and Kanibasami should be the same. You should be getting away from your knees in order for them to be safe. So recently I've talked about Capoeira and what Capoeira does is they sacrifice themselves, which is a Sutemiwaza Kanibasami, but they post their hand on the ground. Thus, there's no upper body control, and then they roll over and take Uke down. Let's see here an example. He takes him down, roll away with Kanibasami, no upper body control, takes him down, nothing happens. He falls away from his knees and ankle. In my opinion, this is a far better choice uh, if you want to go with Kanibasami only when the hands are not 
grabbing the upper body. Final one, Do Jime. Do Jime is your closed guard where you really squeeze and tighten on the ribs can cause uh, obviously injuries to the ribs and internal organs. The reason why this was uh, prohibited because even till this day, the all Japan, you have what is called the open weight. And back then there was no weight category. So you can have someone like Teddy Rene go up against Takato and imagine him locking his legs and squeezing him. He would absolutely just kill him basically. And it suffocates. I've been put in it uh, unintentionally and it does work. So what exactly is Dojime? Dojime. You have the body and the strangle. Um, it can you can attack the torso and the diaphragm in other ways one great way is none other than Keisa Gatame uh, there's many osaikomis that they themselves are a submission from Sankaku Gatame um, and also Keisa Gatame Keisa Gatame not only you have uh, a, a triple whammy from chokes arm locks and also you have the pin same with Sankaku Gatame um, Keza Gatame can also serve as a choke. I'm sure you've heard wrestlers say body compression. Many times on the IJF circle, you see here Henry Atkins uh, is explaining it. Henry Atkins is a Hex Hickson Gracie uh, third degree black belt. So you know he's all about the classics. He explains that he brings his legs towards him and drops his weight on UK and thus compressing the chest like the wrestlers. Uh, many times on the IJF circuit, like here you see Kanto and Travis Stevens, many tap to the pin when they're actually, they are suffocating when you have your weight on their diaphragm and you are actually squeezing their head and their arms or just their head, they tap out. Sometimes the pin itself is uh, a submission. You can comp compress the body, do jime, hence the term do jime. And the best way, in my opinion, is to do it from Keiza Gatame, judo's most uh i would say renowned pin uh rarely done in jiu-jitsu fear of taking the back because you know the back is the king in jiu-jitsu uh but you can easily choke from keza gatame to those old school pin by really dropping your weight down on the um diaphragm and also the torso in general and many people you see them on the ijf circuit they tap from the pin it's because they are being suffocated by the weight and also grabbing the head and squeezing it so if you have anything else to add let me know down below also consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only and please do not forget to check out josh simon's shop for articles and the t-shirts this was shady and thank you for listening